This episode we're going to be doing a revival on a River Rossi Berkshire that I found in a second hand store not too long ago. Let's see if we can bring it back to life. Hi, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Found this in the basement of this second hand store. It was sitting there, bought from a collection, been dusty for years and years. So I haven't done a River Rossi in quite some time. Let's get into this, get it cleaned up, get it whooped up into shape, see if we can get it running the rails again like it's supposed to. This River Rossi, Josh, she's been on a storage shelf for quite some time. Uh, a little bell's kind of broken. I'm going to break that off and then I'm going to lose it before I remember to glue it back on. It kind of looks like the older, kind of the older style motor. The tender does some of the, the picking up here. We'll just kind of eyeball it a little bit. Got some nice, nice details on it. I think this is turned the wrong direction. This is what it looks like to me. Looks like this hand railing should be down, down. See some wheel pickups going on right here. And then it goes to this pin, and that gives the, the locomotive the juice that it needs from the tender. Probably not much going on on the inside of this. We'll have to take that body off though so we can clean it. And we gotta, of course, take this off too. So I got one of these little painter's trays right here to put the little pieces parts in so I don't lose them. There's one screw that's down underneath here, and the other screw, he's hiding out, he's hiding out right up here. Looks like something going on on the boiler. It's kind of neat. And we've also got to get these hand railings removed from the back here. This one's been bent down a little bit. It's kind of locked in there. This must be a good Wednesday afternoon one here. This guy did his job 100% all day long. It's not a Friday afternoon one, that's for sure. Can we pull that? Oh, we can. Yes. Am I going to lose that in the sink when I'm trying to wash it? Probably. Let's get this little fella twisted out. This little fella right up in here, and oh, voila. Oh, I was hoping it was a smoking unit. Dang it. Get that in the sink and clean all that up. These dang gearboxes. I remember the problem I had with those with the River Aussie big boy. They've been lubed with petroleum based grease and they were deteriorating real bad. This one, this one looks significantly better. Geez, well, I had two more of these, I could fix the big boy. <laughs> Little drive line, it's got notches in it. You know, everything here, it's running, it's running smoothly. Look how that motor seems to be kicked a little bit off. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Cause this is sitting like this. So yeah, they, they cambered it out a little bit. Give it a universal joint kind of action Jackson going on right there. I wonder why Rivs never made smokers. I want to take these wheels and all this stuff out of the bottom. I'm going to take this screw out that's under these front pilots right here. And there's another one back here at the rear. Drivers. Oh, they got another one clear up underneath there. This folded right up. Let's try this one. <laughs> Ooh. So we got it out. Well, we got our power wires. Warm up this pin. Oh, I'm going to clean that tip. Keep your tips clean, fellas. Right now. Look at that. Got a rolling chassis. Sure. Two more screws under here to get the weight out of the bottom of the boiler. One. Another one. Both different, different shapes. This one's a countersunk up here. This one was not. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be able to clean that up so nice. Now this motor's sealed up. You see that the little little metal little pins are bent over right here. We can't get into that. That's pretty small. Looks like we can at least get the brushes out of there. And that's going to be about it. Maybe I can bury it in that. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Submerge in that jewelry cleaner that I've got. V -v 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 Berkshire fun fact number one. The Berkshire, with a 284 wheel arrangement, was designed to compete against the USRA's Mikado. They felt that the Mikado didn't have enough power, and it, and it, didn't, and it didn't have any speed. It didn't go very fast. The, the way they made the Berkshire faster is that they made the, the, the firebox bigger, weighed more, so they had to throw another axle underneath of it at the rear of the cab to help support the weight, and that's how it came up with that wheel arrangement of a 284. Everybody's got some simple... Delicate jewelry cleaner from the Walmart. Hooking this up to the transformer. We're going to fire it up and jam it in there. It is not... It's... I mean... 
it don't even start moving until around 70% on the throttle. She's a little, little hairy. Sure, yes, how weird does this look? It does seem weird, doesn't it? Huh, the light bulb even works. My lucky day. Give her the full send. We're gonna go rinse this out, make sure it's dried really, really good. Then we'll come back and give it just a little, little earl. I think I'm gonna try this jury cleaner on the scub that's on this thing. I just, you know, it just takes so much time to do the Q-tips and the mineral spirits. This has got a lot of dust in it and it just takes a lot of time. And I like, you know, finding ways to save time, especially when you got as many locomotives to work on as I do. Every day I get farther and farther behind. I can see that there's some old grease, old oil that's hardened up on these valve mechanisms here. And I can see that I'm taking it off. This is working out better than I'd hoped. And a little more comfortable than sitting over the sink doing something like this, because if you drop something and it goes right down the drain, guaranteed. One traction tire down there, I, goodness. Well, heck, I can even polish the wheels like this. This. This is all right. See all the all the dirt that came off. Rinse this off and let it dry. Well, this is interesting. I just noticed that the, the trucks underneath the boiler, the rear of the cab, they've got pickups on it too. Is this what does all the juice picking up? I would have to say, yeah. I'll have to work on making sure these are really clean so it doesn't pick up off the drivers at all. Tender wheels and underneath the engineer, the rear trucks, the trailing trucks. Yeah, just learn stuff every day. Working on these, I'm like, well, look at that. Now that our motor's got all dried up, let's give it a little, little taste up in here. And a littler one back over here. Let's see if we did any good. Now, it used to be it wouldn't start spinning until about 65% on this little sweetheart right here. Oh, you, look at that. Yeah. We might have something here. What if we can take this brush out and just even look at it? Let's just see. It's one little brush spring right here. Is that that silly one that looks like a rolled up piece of screen? Yes. That must just be what they do. This one is actually just like, it's hollow. It's like a screen that you'd use in a faucet aerator. And then this other one will be completely different. Nope, and then this one's a normal looking brush brush. And it boggles my mind. Really wish I can get in there to clean up that armature. Yeah. So I can't get in there to clean it, but you can see the the commutator inside there. I sure like to blow that. That thing is coppery clean right there. Holy moly. That's a good little technique, isn't it? Sheesh. Get these brushes back in there before I lose them. Berkshire fun fact number two. The name Berkshire was chosen for this locomotive due to the Lima Locomotive Works doing the testing on, I, I, know, I guess it would be the first one that they were building, the prototype. They were testing it out in the Berkshire Hills of the Boston and Albany Railroad. That's where it got its little nickname from. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railway nicknamed theirs, Kanawas. The Louisville and Nashville Railroad nicknamed theirs, Big Emma's. Well, I want to get down into here and service up this one miter box, which is driving just this one wheel. Three screws here. I'm hoping these two will do it. And I want to fart with that because that's spring. But, you know, if you have to, you have to. Pop these two screws out here. Two. Is that enough? Is that going to do it for me? Yes. See? And, of course, the water's still in there. As you can see that miter box sitting right there. And I believe he is just friction fitted in. So you can push on this guy, this pin, this miter box input. Gently lift this guy out with the wheels. Come on, come on. We'll fold one. Oh, there it is, y'all. See there, we can open this up a little bit. Got to clean all that old oil out. Plus I got water in there. When you look at this, these bearings go in, and then that drive shaft, this little nib that's sticking out right here, goes in with this big circle right there. That's what centers it up in the bottom of that drive. This is what the bottom of it looks like. So I'm going to get busy now with Q-tips and mineral spirits to clean all of this moisture out of here and any old grease that may be present. And oh, look, my, my timing went off. That's, that's, just great. Oh, there we go. Clean all this out of there. Clean it all up. Get it all dry. Pull these off. Thrust washers. Yes. Clean all this up. 
we can start to reassemble the lower drive train. It's been a couple episodes since I've done one of these, so let's knock it out in this episode right here. This week's Classic Model Trains Classic Model. Do you guys know who this is? If you do, type in the comments down below. If you don't, hang out till the end. I'll, I'll let you know at the very end. That wasn't bad at all. Not bad at all. Not a lot of grease in there. You can take all these wheels and fold them out and up to clean in there, to get in there and root around with the Q-tips. So they're all, it's all, you can get in and really, really clean it up if one was so inclined. I think I'm gonna use some super lube on these shafts in here and thrust washer. I've been fortunate enough to have them. They're still in here. That tells me nobody's got in this deep before. Just a little, you don't gotta get crazy with it. Work on assembling this. That's what you'll have when it's all said and done. Get this guy meshed up on that axle and then you push it back in, getting this centered up, that round boss centered up in the frame. Yep, goes in, stops, you're done. I wanna put a little grease on this gear that's down inside there that's on that drive axle. I'll put this lower drive line on so I can spin that miter box. Spin it around some, give it just a little bit more grease. It's not gonna take too much. And we can put our cover back on. Hold this whole thing together. This one's trying to turn into a flinger on me. There, we're, yep, there we go. It's like this drive, looks like these drive rods both got a little, a little bent up at some time. They got some whoopies to them. And then of course there's a thousand places to oil on these. Everywhere there's something that moves. Give her a drink. And then of course I forgot to oil the axles when they were out. So we can just still come in, catch them from the back side right here. Give them a little bit. They've got square axle journals that they're in. Good old River Aussie. So there's that chassis done. Here's our rear truck and pickup. And I can see that there's some debris that's on these axles right here where the pickups are at, especially on this front one. So I wanna go ahead and make sure that this is extra, extra clean. And then these wheels, of course, have gotta be just the absolute bomb because that's where we're getting our juice from. Man, you wanna talk about pizza cutters. Look at those things, holy moly. Bottom of our shell came out real nice. Let's work on getting this weight back in. Two different screws. One's a countersunk, one's not. Get those in the right place. Okay, countersunk goes in the front by the headlights, yes. The simple wood screw looking one, it goes in the back. Make sure to feed your wires that come, you know, up here from the motor down. They sit on top of this pin. Tin that, let's retin this. It's being a little bit of a pill. And then, we will put our drive in. This long one up here in the front. Two short ones look like wood screws. Then this truck here hinges in, sits like that, and we put the second one in. Because this one here is what holds this rear truck in. This upper miter box, it comes apart the same way. The input shaft, or the output shaft, because it sits down in like this, Split it. Oh, there's stuff in there. Yep. Lots of oil. This one was actually just like it was maintained well. But we're going to be back to the mineral spirits. So we want it all. We're here now. We're going to clean it up. Get in here. Get all this old oil, all this old grease out. Make sure it's clean before we start to re-lube it. This one was a little more, a little more funkier. Had a lot of oil in it though. We don't want a bunch of oil. Going back to our super lube. These little ball drives. We want some super lube. Multi-purpose synthetic grease here underneath this ball. We're gonna do it here too. Grease, I like grease because it stays put. Now this bushing, see them right there. We're gonna give it a little taste. We're gonna give it a little taste right there. So we put this little fella in, this gear, and they do all have the thrust washers. I checked. Pull that thrust washer away. Get some grease in behind it so it can do its job. Needs grease on both sides of the thrust washer. So this guy's gonna sit down like this and we need this input notch right there to go back towards the motor. So we're just gonna flip this around like this and we're going to give this helical worm gear a little bit of love. That box is serviced. This intermediate drive shaft, of course it's gotta be timed here 
and down below. Turn it, oh, yep, you can feel it set in there. Where do we got? We're gonna go back over this way. So I'm gonna loosen this motor because it's only got these two little screws right here. We can lift that up. We can get this drive shaft timed on there. Set that back in. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe I should have had these bolted down first. I bet you. Get those two screws in. Then when you're trying to line up the motor and stuff, it's just one more easier. Oh yeah, 40% power. Noisy bugger though. Golly, came out quite nice. One body, one little height of bolt. Put that thing out in plain sight and no, you don't even know it's there. Get this guy situated for back over here and slip it in. And then of course, don't forget about your hand railings back here. Berkshire fun fact number three. This one's kind of a sad one. There's only two operating Berkshires left around right now. The Pierre Marquette 1225 and the Nickel Plate 765. Only two still running, live steaming, doing their thing. <laughs> what should we do with this? I bet you we should take the trucks off and clean them up. Look at that, the pickups and a thrust washer. Same both sides, yeah, mm -hmm. Plus that, I wanna look inside here. Do you guys wanna look inside here? I wanna see what's going on. What's up with this pin? Where is it connected to? We gotta unscrew this pin right here. And is there a tiny nut on this side? I'm not kidding you. That thing is, where did he go? It is stuck right up there on the body. Nope, not anymore. Oh, that's gonna be an absolute joy to thread back onto there. But that's about what I, sure, pickups goes up to this. This is clean, makes contact with that pin. Yep, so it can transfer the juice forward. So we're gonna clean all this, wash this body down here, and then we're going to clean these trucks up. Oh, there's a spring, holy, oh, it's running away from me. I better get this out like this. I know what that is. That bolt and that spring was underneath there. Does this one have one? Yep, it goes underneath that bolt head. Right there. So we will mineral spirits, these pickups right through here. Also up back over here, because they're making contact. We're gonna mineral spirits all the, these, well, these two for sure. Clean these wheels up real well. Clean any dust and dirt off of them we can. There's insulated wash, these insulated, these wheels here. And then you can see that there's, and then there's a big, big washer over on this side that there's, I think it's pretty, probably pretty important to put those on you know, the polarity being the same and being opposite front and back like that. So when I go to put them back on, I'm gonna put them on like this, just like they came off so I don't blow it. Got us another one of them storms brewing out there. Put these trucks back on, little washer underneath. Put this feller on like this. Second hole to the back. And then the trucks, now I'm gonna put this big insulated side, I'm gonna put it all over there. I didn't pay attention when I took it off because I had, you know, there's stuff going on here. There are production crews and sound guys and the director and everybody's yelling and it's just sometimes you just, you just miss. But if I put these both on the same side, I'll either have a 100% chance of it working or a 100% chance of it not. But I won't have a short out. And so that's, that's kind of the key that I'm, that I'm looking for. Bolt with the spring on it, line all this hoopla up. Wind's blowing my door shut. Give it a snuggin', make sure the trucks roll. Oh my, my, my. Mother Nature. Oh, sure, now the dogs show up because they're scared. Hey, chicken butt. Are you actually hiding out in the bathroom? My goodness. I'm gonna give these axles just a little taste under here. And this thing will be ready for the tracks. Okay, well, I wanna let you guys know, you know, I don't I don't have any of them there fancy sponsors, nothing like that yet. And I got a lot of locomotives that are accumulating over here. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna put this one up here. It's for sale on the eBay right now. Auction. We're gonna auction it off. Reason I do this is so that we can I can, you know, get some extra scratch so I can buy more stuff to fix up so I can sell again. It's up for auction right now. I got the link down below. There'll be a link in the description. If I did everything right, here's a picture of it right here. This is the eBay auction site. You can and, and go there. Helps raise money for the channel. And then I'm not like really out there eBagging for stuff because you actually get you actually get something from me. We did a couple episodes on these ones too, the demonstrators. 
I, these are the blue box demonstrators. They're also going to be available for auction. D just to let you know, just you can only look for it for like a week after watching this. Happy bidding. Thanks for helping out the channel. Helps out the channel a great amount so I can get more stuff to show you guys how to work on. Thanks. Yeah, that came out right like that, yeah. That's about the lowest creep speed. It's got four and a half volts. We're pulling just a little over, what's that, half, oops, half an amp. Let's give it a little something to pull. See if it looks better. I wonder if we'll be able to pull this off in one shot. Oh yeah, that worked out quite nice. <laughs> Is it noisy? Uh, I don't know. If you made it this far, thanks for watching to the very end. And about 33% of the people that start watching the video are at the end. So I have 33% of the people out there, thank you very much. I'm Ron, Classic Model Trains. Bye-bye.